This is Andre Damon with the World Socialist website. We're here with the WSWS arts editor, David Walsh, who just got back from Toronto, where he was visiting the Toronto Film Festival. What can you tell us about the film festival, just in general, you've been going now for, what, close to two decades. Could you give our viewers just a little bit of a background about uh, what it's like? Well, it's a big event. It's, it's in the first place, the festival is several festivals. It's part of the world sort of film business. Deals are made there, money is organized there, arrangements are made. 5,000 industry delegates are there, thousands of media representatives. Uh, and on the other hand, it's a place where serious films come as well, not simply the commercial films, not simply the money-making films. And so it's always interesting because it's a venue where, despite everything, there are always interesting things to see. There were some 300 feature films. We, s Joanne Laurier and I saw about 40 of them, and we thought there were some significant ones. Mm -hmm. You wrote earlier uh, this week on the WSWS in your initial write-up of the film festival that there are some kind of artistic, intellectual, political changes in the air of this year. Could you maybe talk about that? Yeah. I mean, it's, a, it's difficult to put one's finger up precisely on it because m measuring the changes from year to year in such a big, complicated event is difficult. But I think we felt the cumulative effect of a certain intensity, a certain urgency, which was new. Mm. Uh, films from the United States about foreclosures and homelessness, about drone warfare, uh, films about corporate predatory practices, films about fascism from Germany, Nazism, uh, a number of works which cumulatively, uh, as I said, had a certain effect. But as well, we encountered in the comments and interviews and discussions with filmmakers and this is what I thought was one of the most interesting facts. Events, issues, facts that we raised in the World Socialist website now reaching, if you like, into the, sort of the mainstream. Hmm. For example, a director of the film 99 Homes, Ramin Barani, an Iranian-American director, which is a very moving film in many ways about foreclosures, in his press conference spoke about the fact that 85 people in the world control half the world's wealth. Hmm. Right? Or, or the same wealth as three and a half billion people a fact that we often refer to. There were films, as I say, by two prominent actors, Paul Bettany and Jennifer Connolly, about homelessness. There was the film Good Kill about drone pilots and drone warfare, which, you know, had real weaknesses, but also had some very moving footage and certainly demonstrated, whatever the filmmakers may think, the criminality and the war crimes that are being committed in Pakistan, Yemen, and all over the world. Hmm. So events like that. And then we had the Mike Lee film about the painter of J.M.W. Turner, the 19th century Turner, a painter, where he made the point, a significant point, and the film makes the point, that Turner wanted his, his artwork to be shown to the public in a single body, free of charge. Mm. That point was emphatically made in the film, which of course, one way or another, is a response to the privatization, the threats to museums and galleries all over the world. So something is taking place. Also, two filmmakers in interviews, one Swiss Iraqi filmmaker, one Bosnian filmmaker, referred to the events in Ferguson mm. as signs of the growing reaction and response, not about race, as signs of the growing reaction and response and anger of the American population. So all of that, the films, the interviews, the facts, the various social relationships that were referred to, had a cumulative effect and indicated to us that something, that something was different. So David, you mentioned in your article that you got a sense that uh, one of the big or important changes was a uh, certain disinfatuation with Obama. Could you maybe speak about that? What made you feel that way? I just feel that the films l like the ones about homelessness, like the one about foreclosures, like the one about drone pilots, couldn't have been made several years ago. Because in the early years, there was in these circles all sorts of illusions or self-delusions about Obama. And I think the fact that these films are made, although none of them explicitly refer to the administration, well, the, the drone film does. It makes, it makes the point that the crimes that are being committed are specifically ordered by the CIA and the administration, and it's set in 2010. So that's something of a different difference. But in general, they don't mention the administration, but it couldn't have been, they couldn't have, these kind of critical films couldn't have been made several years ago. There is you have to feel a growing aversion, a sense that something is deeply foul about this administration. Mm. 
mm. or that deeply foul things are taking place under this administration. Mm. Whether the filmmakers themselves are politically cognizant of you know, the realities is, is another question. One could really understand these, these types of shifts taking place, especially uh, I think given the shift in popular consciousness just over the course of the past year, you've just had so many events, one, one on top of another, from the events in Ferguson to the spying re uh, revelations to the uh, drone murders to everything just kind of piling on top of w one another. Do you think there's sort of kind of a cumulative effect that, that's undermining the this, this sort of cultural stagnation or quiescence that's, that's taken place over several decades? Yes. I do. I think that is that is the, what's taking place, you know. And as I say, I don't know how consciously it's registered, but I think there is a cumulative effect of the crimes, of the a the crimes taking place overseas, b the obviously absolutely devastating social situation in the United States. Mm. Whether it's the as I say the foreclosure crisis, the homelessness crisis, the effects of natural disasters. In Hurricane Katrina and the aftermath of all these events, there is something accumulating which is reaching a kind of point, mm. you know, a nodal point. And that's expressed itself. Again, I don't want to over overemphasize it or exaggerate it. And, you know, any of these films, any of these comments sort of individually are probably inadequate. But one has a sense of a different kind of feeling, a different atmosphere, let's mm. put it that way. Yeah. When you think about it, the fact that there hasn't been a major film about the foreclosure crisis, for instance, which, I mean, you're talking about, what, 10, 15 million families who lost their homes, and yet this, this, is, this is just not really treated in Hollywood or not treated in ma major feature films up until now. Uh, I think, you know, ev even when you look back at it, it it's sort of uh, a reflection of the emptiness that's existed up, up till now, and I guess that's sort of beginning to change, perhaps. Yes, you don't want to thank heaven for small mercies. Uh, even the films that are currently being made are, in that sense, flawed and inadequate. And there certainly is, if you like, a disgrace that the social situation hasn't been more carefully treated in American filmmaking. Mm -hmm. I mean, you take the situation of a s the disaster in Detroit, that not a single major promin prominent film has been really made, a fiction film has been made about the disaster that struck the city. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's that in itself is scandalous, but nonetheless, this is <laughs> this is the reality we face. This is the si situation we're in, and and I, I we could sense that there are some things changing. Well, David, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us. Uh, I think all of our readers will be looking forward to reading your uh, continuing coverage of the festival. Thank you. Thank you.